Hello, I'm Kenneth Copeland. This is the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Father, thank you for this, this wonderful day today. Thank you for uh, the privilege and the honor. What a privilege it is to come around your Word, to study it and have you involved and have you in our presence. And we thank you for it and we worship you in it. I'm asking you to bless this radio and television audience beyond measure. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. And we have a, a, a group of uh, very excited people here. Right. And uh, I'll tell you what, whew, if, 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 <laughs> if somebody can't preach around you guys, <laughs> just, just, just forget it. You can't preach. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Now, we're talking about the developing and training on, or educating the born again human spirit, the spirit man, the real you. You are a spirit, you have a soul. Made, that's the intellectual part of you. Yeah. And you, you live in a physical body. This physical body is not the real you. Now, you're going to get it back because, see, we get everything that Jesus got. And, you know, it wasn't that didn't anybody recognize him after he was raised from the dead. They knew it was him. I've had people say, Brother Copeland, you think we're going to know one another when we get to heaven? What, what kind of place you think heaven is? <laughs> of course we know one another if we know one another now. If we don't know one another here, we'll have to be introduced there. But I mentioned this uh, Monday when the rich man died and went into hell, went into Abraham's bosom. Uh, no, he went into hell and saw Abraham. Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom. And the rich man recognized Lazarus. He recognized Abraham and he'd never met Abraham. So there's a lot of people in heaven that you and I are going to recognize. They may be kin folks that go back centuries, but we're family. Yeah. Amen. And, but you know, because then you're, you, you're knowing as you are known and you know a whole lot more than you think you do. Yes. particularly in your spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. So it's, it's, uh, it, it's not less alive than here. It's far more alive than you are here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now this is what happens when you begin, we're talking about developing the spirit, though the very first step to is meditation in the Word that we talked about yesterday. And you begin to meditate into the Word of God. And as we read, he told Joshua, you will observe to do all that's written therein. You begin to meditate on it day and night. You just think about it all the time. You're thinking about the Word and particularly certain scriptures that, that have come alive to you. And, and they're, they're so important to you in the situation that you're in at the time. And the more you meditate those scriptures and the more you see yourself changed because of those scriptures, then what happens? It starts expanding what you already know. Amen. 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 Because, hey, that's God living in you yes. and me. And uh, a dear, dear man, Rufus Mosley, he's, he was a... <laughs> very, very wise man in early part of the 20th century. He was talking about a meeting that they were having in Chicago and, and oh, there, just nobody was coming. And it, it was, he was cr just laying in the floor, crying his heart out to God. Oh God, oh God. And said, he, he said, I suddenly quit. <laughs> and I thought, here lies a fool that knows nothing, doing all the talking to somebody that knows everything. <laughs> So when you begin to meditate the Word, you quit talking and let Him begin to expand your thinking. Well, it's not coming out of your mind. 
This is coming out of your spirit. And the more you do that, the more active your spirit is in that endeavor. Oh, that's good. It gets that's good, good at it. That's good. Amen. Oh, Copeland, you're just a dreamer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But my, my dreams yes. have to be oriented in the Word yeah, right. because to dream is to hope. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah, that's good. When Gloria, I mean, for 30 years, Gloria, I mean, she likes to play house, okay? <laughs> and she kept, she, she kept magazines and stuff. And finally, she got so many magazines. I said, I said, baby, why don't you just cut the pictures out that you like and make files of them? So that's what she did. And then she had all files of all of these different houses and, mm-hmm. and all of that. And, and now don't misunderstand me. We were living good. God has, he has put places for uh, our home just really good, but we didn't, hadn't, we had never built uh, mm-hmm. And uh, we were too busy building the house of God to build us one. But everywhere we'd go, we'd come back home. She'd get all her pictures out and her head straight to the dining room table. <laughs> and she's going on this thing, you know, and she finally got her some graph paper and she's moving stuff around. And, and um, finally one day she said, Kenna, I got to either quit this or well, first of all, she said, this house is getting big and I can't find any place to cut it down. I said, sweetheart, it's a dream. I said, dream on, girl. Don't try to cut it back. I just dream on. She said, you mean it? I said, yeah. Oh, so she did. And she came to me one day and she said, Kenna, now remember, we're talking about meditating in the Word because Gloria Copeland is a Word woman. She was a Word woman when I was still a scripturally illiterate just buried in the Word of God. And she's still that way. So uh, she had all these house scriptures. She had furniture scriptures. And she, she had everything. She had scriptures covering everything from the curtains to, I mean, you know, <laughs> but see where her interest was? And she meditated those scriptures. And she's working in with this, all these house plans and everything. And she came to me one day and she said, Kenna, I'm going to have to either build this house or, or just forget it. She said, but I, I think we should take off a few days and, and see if it's God's will to build this house. And she said, if it isn't, and I heard her pray. She, and she prayed it with a smile on her face. She said, Lord, if this is just a dream of mine and not your will to build it, she said, you let me know. And she said, I'll never regret it. And of course, the, the Lord ministered to us over that weekend. And here's what the Lord said to me later. And I ministered, he said, I want you to minister this house to her. And he said, read these scriptures to her. So I turned to her, we were there in our living room and I, I just turned to her and I said, the Lord said for me to minister this house to you, Lord, you're, you're, you're to build this house. And, uh, and I read, read those scriptures. She just started weeping she, and laughing at the same time. She said, those are the scriptures. Those are the scriptures that I put on my first little list while we were living in that little rat hole we lived in. in Tulsa. <laughs> oh, and she didn't call it a rat hole, but it was. But it just, that those are the scriptures that were on top of my little dream list. Oh, oh, See what that did to her spirit? Yes. Yes. Amen. Well, I heard the Lord say this. Now, I'm talking about meditating those scriptures, see? And that's what she's doing when she's working with this house. She'd quote those curtain scriptures. <laughs> she'd, she'd quote furniture scriptures. I wouldn't be able to find a furniture scripture in the Bible if I... <laughs> but I got some airplane scriptures if you want to hear them. <laughs> but see, that these are tools that we needed in the ministry. Here's what the Lord said. I want you to get this because this goes right on with meditating the Word. Meditation in the Word of God will expand your spirit and build your hope. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. 
Here's what I heard the Lord say. He said, Kenneth, that dream began to take upon itself faith and it had to be born. Now, we never mentioned that to our partners. We never said anything to anybody about it. And um, just kept following the Spirit of God. And people, I, I, you know, it took over two years from the time we decided to do it, you know, to get everything ready and all of the architectural plans. And the architect that was helping Gloria, he said, this is the easiest job I ever had in my life. He said, all I had to do is take what you had on your graph paper and just put it over on into architectural plans. And um, but see, th- this didn't come in, in two months. Right. It's 30 years she did this. Right. Well, there's a lot of things you don't have time to meditate on for 30 years. But there are certain scriptures you ought to be meditating on the whole yeah. 30 years yeah. and then all, all the rest of your time anyway. Yeah. But my point is, there were people that would, uh, that would send, you know, their, uh, their usual support into the ministry. And a lot of them would say, uh, uh, and I, I've put an extra hundred in there for Gloria's house. I don't know what she's doing, but whatever she's doing is for her house. Or, and, and, you know, it might have been $10 and might have been $5, $100. And, but it, if over a period of two years, the day we poured the foundation, the money was in the yeah. bank to build. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 That's the way this works. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Meditating the scriptures, meditating the word of God. Hallelujah. Now then, thank you, Lord. Well, I'm not quite, I'm not quite done with that yet. Let's take family situations that look absolutely, totally impossible possible. Don't meditate the impossibility of it. Look up family scriptures. Mm -hmm. Back when our children were young, Gloria and I set ourselves aside and we got, we found scriptures, great shall be the peace of your children, glory to God, you know, and so forth. And we, we, we looked up kid scriptures and we, we made certain agreements with God. Now, if and when our children did things that we didn't approve of, we didn't come all down on them. We didn't get off of our scriptures. We'd already meditated that and we kept on meditating that. Get back over there in Joshua chapter one. I, I'm the, I want to show you something here. How much time do I have, Tim? Good. And um, we're right there in that first chapter. Let's move over to the second chapter. Now, we, we were doing this when they were little and we, we still hold on to these same things today. We're just not, we're just not afraid of what the devil's liable to do right. in our family. He don't get away with stuff in this family Mm -hmm. because our hearts are established. Our hearts are established trusting in God. How do you get that way? Meditating on those scriptures. Mm -hmm. Don't you remember the scripture that said, lean not to your own understanding, but trust God with all your heart, all your spirit, the inner man. Trust Him. Trust Him. Don't ever blame Him. Well, God, just see there, I did that and He didn't do anything. Don't be doing that. Uh Uh-uh. No, no. You remember when the storm was blowing, they said, Master, Start off with the word master. Here's, the, here's, a, here's a double-minded man. Peter said, Master, carest thou not that we're dying? Mm-hmm. 
That is a serious statement. Yeah. Don't you care? God, don't you care that don't, don't go in there? Now, you're going to have to do something about it before that situation comes. And this is the reason you need to be meditating in the Word all the time. Amen. You don't get blindsided then by something stupid that the devil's doing. Now then, let's go to the second chapter of Joshua. I want you to notice this. Now, Joshua sent two spies. He knew better than to send that, that whole raft, you know. He'd already been there once, yeah, once right. in that deal. So he found him two faith guys and sent them. And they went across there. And you know the story. They got in connection with Rahab the harlot. Now, you need to be careful with uh, Rahab the harlot, you know. And the scripture is very pointed about calling her that even over in the 11th chapter of Hebrews to let us know, amen, that Rahab the harlot became Jesus' great, great grandmother. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> you know, God can handle the harlot part. Yeah. It's religion that can't handle it. <laughs> Amen. But I want you to notice something here now. Verse 9. She said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Now, I'm talking about you meditating this, meditating these scriptures right here. I know that the Lord hath, hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us, and all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites, look at verse 11, and as soon as we heard those things, our heart did melt, neither did there remain any courage in any man because of you. Had they not judged themselves as grasshoppers, they were already afraid of them. God wasn't sending them over there without preparing the territory before they went. God hasn't called you and, to, and sent you to some foreign land without preparing it before you get there. But you will never know it if you don't meditate on it long enough to find out about it. I'm talking about seeing yourself there, seeing yourself blessed of Abraham, glory to God, with all of my financial needs met. He doesn't send you in there to get poor like them. He didn't send you in there to get them rich like you yes. and break the poverty yes. and bring the blessing of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you meditate the hard part, the hard part's all you ever get. And everybody, everybody died in that desert older than 20. You know why? It wasn't because God's mad at them. It's because they kept saying it. They kept saying it. We're going to die in this desert. He brought us out here to kill us. We're going to die in this desert. We're going to die in this desert. There's, those people are too big. The cities are too bad. We're going to die in this desert. We're going to die in this desert. And all the time, everybody over there was absolutely scared spitless of them. And they gave them 40 years and a whole generation Had they gone immediately, yeah. mm -hmm. they were so afraid of them. It had been like the, the Gulf War. Thank you, Jesus. Those Iraqi soldiers were, they were surrendering to helicopters. <laughs> they wanted out of this thing. The terror of the, of the American military had fallen upon them. That's what happened over there that day. So meditate those verses. See, you find this and you think, boo, look at this. Why, that's not a big bad deal that I'm called into compared to what 
what, what they were facing, but God already had a plan. He already had it fixed, and it was a blessing plan, not a curse plan. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. He said, I know the plans I have for you, and they're good. Yes. They're good. Well, those kind of scriptures need to be meditated and meditated and muttered and talked about and thought about and, and instead of just going day in and day out and wonder, you know, what the politicians are doing, dear Lord, and just meditate on all that all the time. Well, that's all you'll ever have in your mind. And it'll choke off your spirit. You don't know it, but it does because you can't feel it. Mm-hmm. And you get in the, you know, you get into the Word and you're standing on these scriptures and so forth, and then still not much happening. <coughs> Wonder why. Junk. Mm-hmm. Junk. Now, how much good would it do me, or anybody else for that matter, how much good would it do me at 82 years old to be on a strong exercise program, strong one. How much good is that going to do? And never do anything about my diet. It's going to do me more damage than good because my body's not going to be, it it won't have the wherewithal and the nutrition to take that physical stress that's being put on it. And most likely at my age, I'll fall and get hurt or something, you know, because I'm I'm pushing it. Well, (coughs) it's spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. And it's not easy, but you can meditate it long enough and stay in the Word long enough. I hated exercise, and I said so. If you say something long enough for it to get into your spirit, it'll control your life. Yes. And when I started this strong program, I, I grabbed a hold of those, those two rope handles on that A-frame, and the first pull I made, it came out my mouth before I could get my hand over my mouth. God, how I hate this. I slapped myself. I slapped my hand over my mouth. My mouth. I, I repent before you. I love this. I love it because it's you, and I thank you for it. And that thing lifted off me immediately. Praise I can't hardly wait to get in there. I love it. I love daily television. And for years, I didn't. I won't go into all of that. You know, stupid's hard to fix. (laughs) Anyway, and the Lord straightened me out on that, and I began to confess it several years ago. My, how I love daily television. And it's thrilling. Well, what's happening? My, my, My spirit is being strengthened and nourished on the Word of God, and we're out of time. Hey, Jeremy. Thank you, sir. You know, we're seeing in these broadcasts how our dreams need to be oriented in hope, how meditating the scriptures expands our spirits on the inside and builds that hope. You begin to see the possibility of God's promises in whatever impossible situation you're in. Listen, the answer is inside you when you are in Christ. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.